So, what the hell is a kilt pin anyway? Evening folks, it's KT with episode 29 of Everyday KT. And I'm going to help you figure out what a kilt pin is, what it does, where you, how you use it, and all of that kind of shenanigans. And even show you a bunch of information about some, uh, some kilt pins I've made. Because I don't, I don't buy them anymore. I make them myself. So, first things first. What the hell is a kilt pin? So, I'm going to show you here. This is a traditional, like when I say traditional, I mean you can go buy it at pretty much any Celtic kilt or Scottish shop in the universe. It's a very simple sword with a pin on the back. See right here? And you have a little mechanism here. Oh, I did it backwards. See the mechanism here? It turns and opens. And that goes into your kilt. Now, this is what you can probably pick up for, depending on the place, anywhere between five and twenty dollars U.S. Um, you can get them like this. You can get them with clan crests on the hilt. You can get them with clan crests here in the front. You can get actual your clan crests um, as a kilt pin as well. You can get these all over the place. So, okay, now you have your kilt pin, what do you do with it? If you'll notice here on my apron, I have my kilt pin. And if you'll see, I actually have it only through the upper, the outer a apron, not the inner apron. I have seen many, many times at Renaissance festivals, Scottish festivals, out at the pub, wherever, where people have taken their pin and, and pinned it through both layers. Basically what this does is it turns your free-flowing kilt into a bag. So unless you have some very specific reason for it, the kilt pin only goes through just the top layer, the out, which is the outer apron of your kilt. Right along here, along the selvage on the edge. Okay, where it's frayed. If you can see right here, just put it down at the bottom. Um, I have seen a lot of people that have multiple kilt pins for whatever reason. Totally fine. And if you want to have it at the bottom here, if you want to have it up top here, also totally fine. Um, about three years ago, I got a small bag of things from my, one of my grandparents who had passed, and in and in there was a what looked like a diaper pin, but it was actually a kilt pin from I believe World War One, from the the, the one of the Highland. Uh, units from Scotland, either Scotland or Canada. I don't know which one. Um, I'm still trying to get some more research out of it, but that thing was awesome. So the kill pins go back a long ways, but that was basically just a really big look, diaper pin looking thing. So, like I said, first things first, this was your basic ornamental kill pin. Um, why do you have it? It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, so you have the sporin, which kind of keeps things in intact. But this piece of fabric, this apron, will catch the wind constantly. So if you put a kilt pin here, it will give you some more support. Well, support's not the right word. A little bit more weight to the front apron and keep the apron down so that you don't wind up flashing everybody in the universe. So when I'd said that I had gotten into kilt pin making myself, I'll give you a little bit of a history. So... One of my very first kilt pins, let's see if I can find it. I actually had some made. You know, here it is. Uh, back in the very beginning of the Brotherhood of the Kilt, you know, here's our crest uh, right here. Uh, we had that, we designed that many, many moons ago. And I had these kilt pins commissioned right here, as you can see. They're very cool. You know, they're very, they have everything. Whoops. And... They're also really slippery. On the back, you'll see they have that same pin style, but it's just glued on. And I found these were really cool. Um, they also have the maker's mark stamped all over the back. Um, they were pretty awesome. The company was uh, somewhere here in the U.S., but they sold to a company in Canada. And while they were going to offer me the same price per pin, the import taxes would have tripled my costs to get these made, which was about double what the pin cost in the first place. So we completely stopped that. 
So I had some friends who had access to some CNC machines and such, and I said, hey guys, can you help me out here any? So this is what they did. This is a piece of magnesium. And as you can see, they made a mold in the, the magnesium. And see, here's another one. That, it's been in the basement a while, so there's a little bit of, um, it's not rust, but whatever it is, built up there. But this is what I did my first kilt pins with. Just I have a pewter uh, melting pot, and I just pour them in there, and it would create kilt pins. Now this is the very first one I ever poured. As you can see, it's, it's very nice, but it's thick. It is really thick. Uh, and the back is a little messed up because I hadn't figured out exactly what I was doing yet. So, that was the very first one I made. And I experimented with it for a while before I actually got to something which I can actually use. Which is one of these. Just like this. And I've actually antiqued it with some oxidizer. But this is the kilt pin that eventually came out of those molds. And the back is, I, I did a lot better job on the back. And I used pins like that, as you can see. And these just pop right off. And they go right into the kilt, right into the apronine kilt without any problem. This is the second most popular kilt pin attachment method that I've seen, aside from that other pin. Now, while these are really awesome looking and they're really cool and they look awesome, they are heavy as hell. So I did some more experimenting, and on the Brotherhood of the Kilt's first anniversary, I had these made up. As you can see, it's real shiny, but it has an ornate, and I'll show you this one because you can get a better view, very ornate number one in uh, with, with some Celtic knotwork on it. And we had I, I made a bunch of these as well, and that was nine years ago. So we haven't done any of these since. But again, it's very thick. It does have the pin closures on the back. Um, then we, I kind of got a little, decided to experiment some, so I went and I found a piece of wood. And I carved that. It says Kilt's Rock on it. And what it looks like, well you don't know what that is. But this is what it ultimately turned out to be. It's basically a no pants kilt pin that says Kilt's Rock right across the front of it. Trouble with this one is, it is really thick and really heavy. I think I made two of these. And I said that's it. No more. So we even went as far as I had a friend who tried to make some kilt pins for us and he took my kilt, my kilt man and had these made up with a pin on the back but again really heavy, really thick and I'm not a fan of very big heavy kilt pins. The reason for that is that when you pin into your apron here, if it's heavy, it will start to pull the fabric. And what that does is eventually it will tear a hole in your kilt. And, you know, kilts are really robust and strong, but when you have a kilt pin on here and you keep, uh, you know, it's heavy, <clears throat> excuse me, it could really easily tear a hole in your kilt. And you can't really fix them really easily. Um, you can get in there, have a tailor, or a seamstress do some work on it, but the odds of you getting a uh, <coughs> some more of that tartan is pretty low. So I started getting kind of creative, and uh, I had had one of my friends who is a wood carver by trade. I'm like, I need something. I need one of those like old timey guy with the beer can, the the beer glass from like the '60s. You know, the how was your day kind of picture only with scotch. The guy's a genius. This is what he made me. Carved this out of wood by hand. Check this out. So he did this and there's a very very beefy which is basically a small diaper pin on the back. Now this is wood and it's it weighs almost nothing. So what I did is I said I love it. Do you mind if I make kilt pins out of it? He's like, absolutely. So, I took this, and I made molds. 
Now, I gave away all the kilt pins that I had made from that, but I did have a couple of stands, and this is what came out of it. Now, as you can see, he's still got the, gla the, the uh, Glen Cairn in his hand, and what I usually do is I'll paint the teeth white here, put some scotch in the bottom, kind of like what the original, and paint the eyes and stuff. Um, and on the back, I would have the same kind of pins as this, just like that, see? And those would go on the back here and here, to hold it to your kilt pin. But, again, pewter. Very heavy. So, I really kind of haven't done anything with those. So I'm like, okay, that's it. I need something that's light, easy to make, and heavy enough to keep the kilt in place without overdoing it. So, what I did is I took my Brotherhood of the Kilt logo mold, and I took some putty, and this is what I made out of it. As you, you, might not be able to see it. Well, let's see if I can get it good enough. See? It's just a little guy with a, a kilt, um, his kilt on, the little kilt man. And it's very small. And I use this as my master. And this is one of the first ones that popped out. As you can see, it looks like crap. So I did a lot of work on the mat, on the mold. And what ultimately happened is, I'll show you, this is the kilt pin that I wear. And this is what turn came out about it. So you can see it's very like old school Celtic runic sort of. It looks like something you might find on the ground if you were wandering around Scotland. It's just a carved piece of pewter. It's not very thick and all that I'm using is a safety pin that has no coil on the bottom. What this does is this allows me to interchange kilt pins all the time without any problems. The those of you who saw my mistletoe kilt pin, it was just, just like this, except it had this on it. This also goes really well as a key fob on your keychain or, or your key ring. So all you do is just slap that in there, boom, and you have a kilt pin. Now remember, it just goes right in the front of your kilt on the apron, down near the bottom. It is a bigger kilt, a bigger pin, so don't stab yourself because blood sucks. And there you go. There, there is the kilt pin. Now it keeps everything tidy where it belongs. And they're actually a lot easier to make than I thought. Uh, just using some RTV rubber and a very small 10 pound uh, pewter melting pot. And as you can see, this is the, uh, this is this, the setup that I had quite a few kilt pins here and these are all just some of the samples and some of the ones that I've made um, the, the first ones that I've made um, so first things first I need somebody to pick a, a volume for Kiltology and secondly at some point in time over the next couple episodes maybe when we hit episode 50 we'll do a giveaway so when we hit up we'll do it on episode 50 we'll do a giveaway and someone who is live watching the video will actually get one of my custom kilt pins that I made God knows when so we've got some people kicking in okay Mark you get it first Kiltology number one so before we get into this remember your kilt pin goes through the outer apron and light is okay you can have as many as you want on there um, you've got some that can be pretty gaudy. You can actually turn pretty much anything into a kilt pin. I've seen bottle caps, um, small tools, pretty much anything that you can put a pin on or attach to your kilt, you can use as a kilt pin. Um, old vintage smiley face buttons and stuff like that all day long. I think I saw one kid once who had one of those massive 1980s new kids on the block uh, pins that were wildly famous back in the 80s and that was the kilt pin. It was crazy but it was cool at the same time. Alright so Kiltology let's see what we got today. Nope I read that one already. Boom we'll go here. Ooh very very uh, here's a good one. Um so this one applies, this is, this is one of the more philosophical pieces that I got into. Um, if, if those of you who have Kiltology, you'll, you'll see that there are 
um, loads of inter interesting bits about the kilt, but sometimes I'll just, you know, start talking philosophically about all kinds of silly things. Um, and yes, Mark, you can leave your kilt pin in. Um, if you have the ability to do so, I like to keep the kilt pin in the kilt unless I'm washing it. Other than that, it stays on the kilt. Um, I have a few friends who, when they buy a kilt, they will find a new kilt pin for that kilt, stick it on the kilt, and that's it. It stays there unless that kilt is being washed. So absolutely, you definitely um, leave the kilt pin in the kilt unless you're changing it to other kilts or washing it. What that does is that reduces wear and tear on your kilt dramatically. I mean, think about it this way. If you take your kilt pin out every time you take the kilt off, and then you put it back in, you're poking new holes in that kilt every single time. So, yes, leave the, leave the kilt pin in there if you can. So, Kiltology, we're on number 124. Only after the last tree has been cut down. Only af after the last river has been poisoned. Only after the last fish has been caught. Only then will you find that money cannot be eaten. That's a Cree Indian prophecy. And it's right here in parentheses. How does it apply to kilts? I have no idea, but it does make a great point. And the reason I put it in this book, probably, I don't know, five, seven years ago, applies then as it does now. Um, you know, money isn't the important stuff. It's family, it's your friends, it's your life. You know, you are, are here, you got one trip, you know, live it to the best you can. That's why I keep telling people to be strong and to put a kilt on because the kilt is not just about wearing a piece of clothes. It's a metaphor for your entire life. If you can stand in front of a crowd wearing a kilt and have a great time, what else can you do? I know there are countless people out there who are afraid of all kinds of things. But if you can put a kilt on and get out there and do it, then you can go and do the next, next thing that's so difficult or you're having trouble with. Or you're the next thing. Or you can be that rock that someone else leans on because they're having a difficult time. That's that's why that particular thing is in here, and that's why I always say, be strong, put a kilt on. Because it's not just about living your life the best you can. To do what you want and to enjoy every moment of your life with yourself and your friends, your family, loved ones, everybody that's important to you. So with that, a little philosophy tonight. I'm thinking I'm going to have, we'll have to have a dram after that. So, um, I don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but we'll find out. As always, this is KT with Everyday KT. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to my um, channel over on YouTube. And I'm on here every night at about 9 o'clock. Be strong. Put a kilt on.